Suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting, and it appeared unto them cloven tongues like fire that sat upon their heads. I'm Pastor Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. I'm so happy that you're tuning in with these programs and learning the Word of God. We've been ministering out of the Gospel of John chapter 14, 15, and 16. We're going to touch into chapter 16 today. But I'd like to uh, pray for you before we get started. So if you have a Bible, Grab your Bible, and those that are watching for their very first time, I just want to welcome you to Times of Refreshing. And this message will be a blessing into your life personally. Father in heaven, I thank you for the viewing audience. I thank you for their families and their children their household, Lord, I pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge of the Son of God to be bestowed upon them, the eyes of their understanding to be illuminated by the Holy Ghost, that they know and that they understand the great hope of your calling, the riches of the glory, the inheritance in the saints, the exceeding greatness of your power to them who believe, according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ, when you raised him from the dead, sat him at his own right hand in the heavenlies, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. Holy Spirit, I thank you for illuminating the scriptures and giving understanding, understanding today, Lord, in Jesus' name. We're going to just do a little review. So if you missed one of these programs, you know what we're teaching out of God's Word. John chapter 14, if you'd like to turn there with me. And we're going to read verse 12. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Jesus was going to pay the most ultimate sacrifice for all humanity by shedding his innocent holy blood upon the cross of Calvary at Golgotha to remit sin, to forgive us when we were dead in our sins. The Bible says Christ died for us. And he was buried. And on the third day, God the Father raised him from the dead. He said here, because I go unto my Father. He says, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. The Father in heaven highly exalted Jesus, gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee bows in the heavens. Every knee will bow upon the earth, and every knee will bow under the earth, and declare Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. He said, because I go unto my Father. Those that do the works of Christ upon the earth are believers in Christ Jesus, baptized in the Holy Spirit of God, just like he was baptized in the third person of the Godhead at the River Jordan. And that's found in Matthew 4, excuse me, Matthew 3 when he met up with John the Baptist, the prophet John. The prophet John said, I'm not worthy to unloose your sandals. But Jesus said, I'm here to fulfill all righteousness. 
and he stepped into the water. He has given us an example and sign what we are to do we're, when we come to Christ. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're baptized in water to repentance, and then we're baptized into the Holy Spirit of God. Get baptized into the body of Christ. And so Jesus, when he came up out of the water, you can read it in Matthew chapter 3, that the heavens opened. There was an open heaven. The Father's voice distinctly spoke. Those that were there that day heard him speak. This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And the Spirit of the living God came upon Jesus as a bodily shape like a dove. He was empowered by the third person of the Godhead. The Spirit of God drove him into the wilderness. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He came back in the power of the Spirit, came into his own hometown of Nazareth, and it declares in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that have been bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord is the year of Jubilee, and you can find that in Leviticus 25. He came to set people free that were bound by evil spirits, oppressed by the devil. The Bible says in Acts chapter uh, 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, because God was with him. God was with him in the person of the Holy Ghost. Jesus' earthly ministry, he was 100% God and 100% man. As a man, he was anointed by the, by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. He was doing the works of his Father. He was doing the works of his Father and glorifying his Father upon the earth. He was not ashamed of the gospel. He was not ashamed of his father. The gospel was being pronounced. Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. Believe this good news, how God anointed me to, to preach the gospel to the poor. How he anointed me to bring deliverance to those who have been bound. When he was in his own hometown of Nazareth, and you can read that in Luke 4, 18, he began to cast evil spirits out of people. Right in the synagogue, people that had demon spirits cried out with a loud voice, We know who you are. You are the Son of the Most High God. And he told them to shut up and come out. The spirits came out of people. Unclean spirits cried out. They said, Why are you tormenting us before our time? See, Jesus came at the appointed time of the Father. He came at the appointed time of the Father to bring forgiveness to the nation of Israel, to bring forgiveness to the world, to bring deliverance to, to the nation of Israel, to bring deliverance to the, the Gentile nations that did not have a covenant with God. Jesus came to fulfill all righteous requirements of the law. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. He came to glorify his Father upon the earth. Jesus said, if you see me, you're seeing my Father. He said, I and my Father are one. He came forth from the Father into this world, and he went back to the Father. He did the works of his Father. His doctrine was a doctrine with power, the power and the dunamis of the Holy Spirit the miraculous power of Almighty God. So Jesus said, These works, verily, verily, I say unto you, this is in John 14, 12, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. 
Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father of glory and poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem when he gave the commission to his disciples and apostles, apostles, go to Jerusalem and you will be endued with power from on high. That power is the miraculous power of Almighty God. It's called a mighty deed, a, a miraculous miracle, an empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. They were dwelling in the upper room. The mother of our Lord was there. The apostles and disciples were there. They were there worshiping God. And on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, suddenly there was a sound that came from heaven of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and it appeared like cloven tongues of fire that sat upon their heads and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. That tongue language was the language of God in their heart and their mouth, the Word of God being spoken in another language because there was devout Jewish men. You can read it, Acts chapter 2. There was devout Jewish men from other nations under heaven. And they began to wonder and marvel because they knew these men were of Galilee. They were Galileans. And they said, how can they speak in our own native language? They're speaking the wonderful works of God. Some were mocking. Oh, they're full of new wine. But Peter stood up with the eleven and lifted up his voice and said, These are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream dreams and your old men shall have visions. And upon my servants and handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. He said, you men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, signs, and wonders, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God raised up. God loosed the pains of death. Death could not hold him. Let's go there. The Lord's leading me to, there, to Acts chapter 2. Read the scriptures. The scriptures verify that it is true. Acts chapter 2 and hold your place in John chapter 14. Acts chapter 2, verse 24. When God hath raised him up, having loosed the pains of death, for it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, the prophet David, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thy suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Holy One is Christ. He never saw corruption. He never saw corruption. He was glorified on the third day. That he, that they didn't even recognize Him. They thought He was the gardener because He had a glorified body. He still had the nail marks in His hands and in His side. He appeared to doubting Thomas because Thomas said, I will not believe unless I can put my finger into his nail prints and my hand into his side. Jesus appeared in a room with Thomas. 
and the rest of the apostles. He said, Behold, my hands and my side, be not doubtful, but believing. Blessed are they that have not seen me, but yet have believed. And Thomas said, My Lord and my God, because Jesus said, A spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see me have. He appeared in a physical body, a physical body glorified. Hallelujah. Verse 28, Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, God speaking to the prophet David. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, who is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God hath sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ. That's in verse 31. That his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. His body did not go to decay. His body was resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. Verse 32. This Jesus... This Jesus, whom God hath raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. So they were eyewitnesses of his ministry, eyewitnesses of the works he did in his Father's name, eyewitnesses of the crucifixion, eyewitnesses of the resurrection, and him appearing to them for 40 days before he ascended to the Father. When he ascended to the Father, that's in Acts chapter 1, they were gazing up into heaven and the angel said, Why are you gazing into heaven? The same Jesus that's ascending is the same Jesus that's coming back. So he is at the right hand of the Father of glory. Sat down in the power. All power has been given to, given to Jesus in the heavens and the earth. Verse 33 of Acts chapter 2. Therefore, being at the right hand, the right hand of God, exalted, having received of the Father, notice that, having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which you now see and hear. Notice, there was evidence on the day of Pentecost. They saw it and they heard that sound, very distinct sound that came from heaven. It was the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says here in verse 33, Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, having received of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which you now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel Know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, 
and you shall receive the gift. Notice that, underline it in your Bible. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is called the gift. He's called the promise. He's called the spirit of truth that proceedeth from the Father. We'll be going through all those scriptures in the Gospel of John. Verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. As many as the Lord our God shall call. That's why Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring, bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Bearing fruit is having your prayers answered. It's going directly to the Father, that the Father be glorified in his Son. The Bible says, And when many other words did they testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto the church, added unto them about 3,000 souls. That's the power of Almighty God. That's the Holy Spirit convicting the heart of those that were there that day. That's the convicting power of the Holy Spirit exposing the heart of sin and rebellion against God and pointing them and preaching through the heart of the heart of Apostle Peter to the nation of Israel. He was preaching Christ to them. He was preaching in the crucifixion to him about him. That he is now risen from the dead. And he has poured out now what you see and hear. That is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one that manifests the miracles and the healings. And he's called the Spirit of Truth. He receives from Jesus and he shows it unto you. He's the one that bestows the gifts of the Spirit, the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues, the gift of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, the gifts of the discerning of spirits, the gift of faith, the gifts of healing and working of miracles. They all manifested in Jesus' ministry. It's called the works of my Father. If you go back to John 14, verse 12, Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Jesus went to the Father and sat down at the right hand of the Father and poured out the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost comes into a heart of a believer and empowers them with a miraculous power to go forth preaching the gospel with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, preaching Christ and Him crucified, preaching about the blood sacrifice of Christ, preaching about the resurrection of Christ, preaching there's only one way to the Father and it's through His Son, Jesus Christ, preaching Jesus to the people, just like Philip. He preached to Samaria. He preached Christ unto them and the power of the Holy Spirit was poured out in Samaria. Devils were cast out. People got healed. Even in Jerusalem, there was a revival in Jerusalem all around about a regional revival. At the shadow of Peter passing by, people were healed. Evil spirits departed from people. See, the Father was being glorified in the Son. 
the Father of glory was being glorified in his Son because his Son paid the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of humanity. And the Father highly exalted him, given him a name that's above every name, the name of Jesus, every knee bows. Every knee will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So to get your prayers answered, it's found in John chapter 14, verse 13. Jesus said, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, his name's the most powerful name in the universe. His name's above every name. That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in, his, in the Son. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, she said within herself, if I but just touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. She touched the hem of his garment. She came through the crowd. And Jesus said, who touched me? He felt the power leaving his, his presence. He turned about and she was trembling. And she confessed that she touched him. He says that your faith has made you well. You know, your faith has to be in Christ and Christ alone. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We come to the throne room of grace to obtain his mercy and to find help in the time of need. The Bible says he's the ever-present help. He's our ever-present help. He is our strengthener. All wisdom, all honor, and all glory comes from God. Who do we glory in? We glory in Christ. We glory in his cross. We glory in his resurrection. This can be the best day of your life by surrendering to Jesus Christ and him alone. And he will put in you a brand new heart. Thank you so much for watching Times of Refreshing. God bless you. Thank you. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.